Hey folks, it's been over a week and that means that I'm back with some more fun stuff for you guys. So last time I spoke about working on uh, screen space mouse picking. Um, I had uh, just recently implemented a world space based uh, ray casting. So, you know, if I have my mouse and I'm moving it around uh, on my screen, then the world will know um, what I'm clicking on based on the bounding boxes of all of my objects in world space. Now, uh, I talked about how that was working pretty well, but it doesn't work super great when I have stuff on the screen like this text that you're seeing or like this icon. Um, the way that my shader pipeline works and that I'd imagine most shader pipelines work with this kind of thing unless you're actually generating geometry for each letter. Uh, I don't know why you'd be doing that. Um, anyway, the way that it's going to work is you're going to have your rasterization stage after which your text will appear. But before that, you don't know the exact geometry. Um, you don't know the exact um, locations of actual letters. So if I wanted uh, ray casting functionality where I can hover over a letter and know if I've clicked on it, then my world space ray casting doesn't do much for me. Hence, screen space based. Uh, we render everything and then we sample uh, the texture that we render the scene to and uh, we can use that texture to figure out uh, what color we have on the screen. So you'll see if I hover over uh, different letters, you'll get um, different uh, colors popping up here in my little uh, helper console here. Um, but if you've been keeping a watchful eye, you'll notice that the colors that are popping up here, like for example, I'm on the floor, I'm getting seven, and then I switch over to this, uh, the different floor, the, sp the Sponza floor. So uh, wood floor Sponza. I'm switching between seven and 52 in my red channel. So here, channels here. So what does that mean? Well, uh, what I've actually done is I'm, I've rendered the scene uh, two times. One with the actual textures, sh shading, all the fancy stuff. And then a second time I'm, where I'm just rendering a unique color ID for every object that I have in my scene, specifically every renderable object. So a scene object might actually have like a couple of models associated with it. So each of those will get a unique ID. And then what you end up with is a system where if you've done everything right, there's a lot of steps that go into it. You can hover over an object and get its unique ID. So in this case, this icon has a unique ID uh, with 97. Uh, as uh, So that means that it's the 97th item that I was rendering during that frame. So that's pretty cool. Um, you'll notice some things have an alpha channel, some things don't. Um, the alpha channel happens when I have transparent objects. That value just falls out of some of the calculations I've been doing, but it works pretty well. Um, I can hover over this piece of text here. I see 96 is the ID for that. Uh, as so this whole text block is rendered right before this icon is. Um, this ID doesn't necessarily correspond to the draw. Um, it will correspond to the draw order. It will not necessarily correspond to um, whether um, something is um, opaque or transparent or not. It's just, you know, I have like a forward pass for um, opaque stuff and then a backwards pass for transparent stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Um, I'm gonna be using this system for a lot of fun stuff like building custom GUIs, uh, which brings me to the next thing I've been working on, which is, ac is uh, actually totally refactoring how 2D rendering works. So before, um, and I wish I had a build running of what my engine looked like previously, but I had a really complicated interface where you had a canvas uh, on which you could put all your 2D geometry and then that 2D geometry had flags where you could maybe track a scene object and then have that geometry appear in the world space uh, or you had like a GUI flag where uh, that geometry could appear um, you know like it is now as a UI overlay and I was just uh, thinking man this is overly complicated there's got to be a more elegant way of doing this and I took some inspiration um, into um, from how engines like uh, Unity uh, do it, where they sort of just treat your canvas as a world space object, and then you can um, control from the canvas level whether or not that canvas is just overlaid on your camera or overlaid in the world itself. So that's what I did, um, and it's working out pretty well. So you can see I have my text and my icon. I have it uh, putting out to both cameras right now, um, since I have it putting out to like the world and the UI layers, but I could uh, go to one of my cameras and if I wanted to, I could just say, okay, don't render um, UI stuff. And then, so if I go back to my canvas and I actually make it, uh, so it doesn't put out to the UI channel, 
um, it will uh, it should no longer appear in one of the cameras. So, all right, I just found a bug. So this is fun. We're doing a live, um, but that's good. I can fix that. Um, but in any case, one of the controls that I did just add, so I know works, is that you can toggle from screen space to world space. And then if I make my label bigger, because now we have to scale it up, because it's in the world space, you can see it over here. I'll make it even bigger. Make it 100. Bam. There it is. Um, and I turned it, oh, I can turn my camera script back down, back on so I can rotate, turn it on. Whoopsie daisies, close that. And there you have it. So now we have the text and the icon in world space. So uh, that's pretty easy peasy uh, compared to how it was before. And then I can move this around, rotate it, scale it however I want, which is pretty powerful. And it means I can do a whole bunch of fun 2D stuff that I couldn't do before. And what I can also do uh, similarly, once again, to how an engine like Unity might do it, is I can go to my um, icons, my labels, all my glyphs, and I can parent them to one another. So that if I, you know, if I right now my icon's actually a child of my text. So if I move my text around, uh, which let me let me actually do that. Let me move my text up a little bit. I don't know. Give it five. It's too much. That's because it's scaled up, so it's going to move a lot more than uh, it says it's going to. So I can move it up a little bit, 0.2, and you'll see it moves up. So that's pretty neat, uh, and the icon's moving with it because it's a child. So this gives me everything I need to build GUIs and UIs and fun 2D stuff in OpenGL, which is super exciting. I'm not at the mercy of any um, other third-party stuff for building my interfaces so I'm really excited to see what kind of things I can build out. So I think I've rambled on and on long enough. Uh, if you guys like what you see, if you have any questions, any comments, concerns, trials and tribulations, please let me know. I'm happy to chat. Uh, I like rambling on and on. But uh, have a good weekend everybody. Happy Friday. Until next time.